Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. It's time to draw. Let me just mark the announcement. Hello, how are you guys? Good morning. All right, there we go. All good to go, good to go. Okay, good morning. Hi, happy Wednesday. Um, welcome back to fall month. Um, fall, October, Halloween month. It is a nice day. I actually have slippers on today. I was a little chilly. I'm like a barefoot queen and my feet were really cold. So I put slippers on. It helped, it helped a lot. Um, so let's see, what is my news? My news is that stickers are coming. If you didn't see them already, I don't know how you missed it because I won't stop shutting up. I won't shut up about them. Um, they are very cute. I'm super excited about them. You will be able to order them soon. I anticipate that they will be here tomorrow, maybe by Friday for sure. They will go on sale next week. Um, there will be three different purchasing options, which I will, you know, give all the details about, but you'll basically either pay one price for one a different price if you buy both and then there'll be a package set where you can buy three and get a drawing from me like you're a, a personalized drawing just for you signed so there'll be three different packages with those stickers um, next week those will go on sale next week and the company who made these stickers for me I have stickers from this company that I have bought from other groups and the quality is amazing. It's such good quality sticker. You can put it on your car, it'll be fine. You can put it on your drawing book. You can put it on your water bottle. Um, they're a nice vinyl sticker. So um, super great. I'm so excited about them. It finally happened. It took too long. Um, Okay, so I have that announcement, and that's really it. Uh, Patreon was good on Monday for those who joined. Um, thank you. That was a lot of fun. It might work differently next week, but um, I, uh, I like that. If you haven't joined that yet, it's not too late. And we are drawing Friday. Um, we'll do some sort of doodle page. And that's it, no drawing on Saturday. Saturday's finally my day off, kind of. I have a private drawing, but. Um, so we're doing a fox today. Um, I feel like fox kind of fall in that fall theme because of the coloring of them. And um, so we're going with a fox. And let me turn on my light and let me flip you around and I will show you our drawing. So here we go, we got this fox inside this pumpkin, put some fall leaves in there. Oh, there he goes right off the page. Um, so there we go, that is our drawing for today. Um, you can, you know, choose to not put him in a pumpkin if you want to do something different, or you can make more fall leaves, whatever you like. Um, it's really funny, but I struggled with this drawing. Oh my gosh, struggle bus. I could not get the nose right. So we'll see how it goes second time around, but oh boy, did I ever draw this about 10 different times. Um, yeah, and then after we're done with the drawing, I will upload this to uh, the group for a coloring page. So... Let's put this aside and let's get started. So I'm gonna start with my pumpkin shape. So I'm gonna just do this kind of slight curve across the page. 
I don't want it to take up the whole page because I want to give some girth to the side of my pumpkins. I want the sides to be wider than the top. And then what I do here is I'm just going to make that rounded pumpkin shape, making it a little bit bigger this time, which just means more coloring. <laughs> Sometimes I do that to myself. I'll make something bigger and then I'm like, oh, God. Oh, gosh, Linda. Wonky nose. I tell you, I literally struggled and it's not a very hard drawing, but boy, oh, boy, did that nose get me. And then what I like to do with the pumpkins to give that wavy shape at the bottom is I will just now then throw in a shape in the middle that kind of curves, comes down outside the pumpkin and then curves back in. And then I will erase this line at the bottom. And then I end up with that nice pumpkin shape. Now you can um, decorate your pumpkin. You could give him, you know, pumpkin carved eyes, whatever you like. I'm just going to keep mine simple and basic today. And then I want this fox coming out of the pumpkin. So I'm going to do a, probably about as wide as the pumpkin. I'm going to curve down, come up, come back down and then back up. For starters, I'm just going to have a line that comes around to connect these two points. I will be changing this shape for the nose, but for now I'm just gonna throw that line in. For the ears, I'm going to curve out just slightly and then do a bigger curve around so it's more flat on the inner part. And then you want those ears to kind of match up in height, so kind of look at your other line and see where it ends. And then inside the ear, you'll repeat that line again to do an inner ear. And you could do little fur bits, you know, like up here on the head if you want. You could just add those little triangular pieces. Give them a little detail. And then if you do that, just erase the line at the top of the head. You can even do that in other places on his face. I'm gonna put his body, so this is going to just curve out from the neck on both sides. And then I'm gonna do a tail. I'm gonna put the tail on this side this time so you're just imagining this tail is kind of behind him, but I want it kind of sticking, you know, out of the pumpkin. So I'm going to start a line over in this corner and kind of curve up into that point and then come back down. I'm going to touch the face, go through the face, pick it up on the other side and finish the tail. And then foxes typically have like a white tip or a creamier tip on the tail and then the bottom is that reddish shade. So I'm just gonna do some zigzagging across the tail, just in this one portion because this portion is covered by the face. Do you notice that I'm leaving the face for dead last? <laughs> like. I'm traumatized from earlier. 
because I'm going to go ahead too and I'm going to put, um, oh, I need to finish off the pumpkin. So the back of the pumpkin, we would see just part of the back coming in right here. We wouldn't see this side because his tail is showing. And then we're going to do part of like a chest line. So like we have, you know, again, this kind of reddish color and then white in the center. And then because this is so wide, we would actually see some on this side too. So I'm just gonna do a little line right here. Maybe. Uh, no, you know what? I don't like that. And I'll tell you why I don't like that, why I'm making an artist decision here. Because when I color, this is going to be this reddish color. This is going to be white. This is going to be this reddish color. This is going to be white. If I put a line right here and color this reddish too, it's just going to look like part of the tail. And I don't want that. I want some clear separation. So I'm just going to leave this big white chest and not color any of this part red. You can totally change and do um, that if you like, but once I put that line in, I'm realizing I don't visually like the way that's gonna look once it's colored, so I'm gonna leave that out. And then I wanted to do some little fall leaves, so I'm just gonna do some lines and then do that teardrop shape around, I'll put one maybe over here, teardrop. They don't all have to be the same size. We could have a small ones up here, maybe another small one down here. And then I'm gonna do a different leaf that kind of has more of that I guess an oak tree maybe. I do not know trees, so do not quote me on this. But I'm gonna do a long line. I'm gonna make a hot dog tip around the top and then some hot dog tips off to the side. Connect it at the bottom and then just go ahead and repeat it on the other side. And then I'm gonna put some lines in these leaves. You could even do some lines off of these if you like. And I'm gonna put one of these leaves over here as well. So I'm gonna do again that long line, a hot dog tip over the top, hot dog tip off to the side, Another one, bring it through, repeat on the other side. And then those lines on the inside, if you choose to. And you could do some other things. You could do um, like little acorns too all around your drawing or even just some little cute dots would be cute around the drawing. And I suppose we need to give this guy a face. So I'm gonna start with the two like humps for the eyes. So I'm gonna do a curve for now, just come straight over in a curve. And then from these points, you're going to zigzag out to the cheek. I can do two ovals for eyes. Foxes tend to have those very black eyes, so I'm just keeping a very simple black eye. If you would like to do something more cartoony, you can. You've drawn a million eyes with me at this point. And now the nose. <laughs> so I am going to put 
a curved edge triangle that's a little off kilter. I don't want it straight. I want it off to the side. So I'm going to do an angled line, curve out of the face. See how many times I can redo this today. It already feels a little big, but I'm going to go with it for now. and it looks a little funny. So what's gonna happen is this line is going to curve down to this side of the nose. And this line is going to curve to this side of the nose and then you're going to erase this. And then in this space, you'll have his smile. So just a little curved edge. And now because of how his head is kind of turned, I'm just gonna play with these lines a bit. So I'm gonna move that one up a little bit so the nose is sticking out a little bit more. This is just kind of where you have to like play with this space a bit. And then this side, I want to come in a bit more. So then again, so the nose kind of sticks out of the face a little bit more than it does. Yeah, see, it looks so goofy to me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I maybe liked that line before. I think too, this is one of those things that until it's colored, it's going to have kind of a funny look to it because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like it just looks like this weird shape, but you're just kind of capturing, you know, foxes have that long nose and you're just really trying to kind of capture that slightly. So just kind of move your lines around until you feel like it makes more sense. That looks a little better to me. I'm probably just gonna leave it and then see what happens when it's colored. Because I think I'll like it better then. That works. So now I'm gonna just come through and I'm going to outline my shape. we've talked about this before. Sometimes you just have to let things go. You have to realize that you are working in kind of a, I'm making this no smaller though, guys, as I'm saying that. But notice how I'm just doing it in pen because by doing it in pen, now I'm stuck with it. Now I'm not going to erase it 15 more times until it looks just absolutely whatever version of perfect I have stuck in my head. Pen, I think, helps you let go. Move his smile a little. Okay. Again, that works. I find a lot of times in drawing that, you know, most of the time. When you're drawing, you're just like, hmm, okay, that works, that looks okay. And then there just will be some drawings 
um, that no matter what you do to them, you're never happy with them. You just constantly want to adjust them. You constantly think things look funny. And I just, I think sometimes it's tied to like mood. Um, I don't think it necessarily is the drawing. I think it's just a projection thing. So that's when you just, you know, work in pen. Or you just take a break that day from the drawing. If a drawing is frustrating you and causing you stress, because this is supposed to be fun, right? Like we're not selling our art for millions of dollars. We're just doing this as something fun, a fun activity. So when fun activities are becoming stressful, that's when you got to just walk away for a bit. And it happens with me. In fact, it's usually why I've always been one who has had craft hobbies. Um, I draw, I knit, I bake. Um, and I've many times tried to sell those products and put, you know, a dollar value on them. And usually someone says, you know, it's because someone says like, oh, you should, you should charge for this. I would buy this. But whenever I do that, it adds an extra level to stress for me. Um, you know, some of, it, some of it is a little bit about it just, it's a better, it's a better hobby for me when I'm not. Having to put a dollar value on it. And I think it works the same for kids too. You know, you, um, if you're just doing something for fun, when my son is just drawing for fun and he's maybe making his, himself a comic book or something like that, he just, he has so much fun with it and he just lets it, lets himself go and lets his creativity fly and flow. And then the minute it's attached to school and there's going to be graded and he feels like someone might be judging him on it, then it brings so much stress. So I feel like that's the same equivalent, you know. Let's get all this pencil off. Loads of pencil shavings. I think this would be a really cute drawing too done. Um, I almost did it on the watercolor paper and then used those watercolor um, pens that I have. It'd be really fun to do the leaves and kind of that watercolor look to them. So I'm gonna come back with this black pen and I'm going to color the eyes in black. I'm going to leave a little circle of light, but I'm not sure. I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to decide if I want them there. And if not, I'm just going to color the eyes completely black. I sometimes like with the foxes when the eyes are just all black. And I'm also this size a little bit smaller than the other. There we go. I'm going to 
going to color the nose in black. Yeah, I think I'll leave those little circles lit today. And then I'm going to do kind of a peachy color inside of the ears. And then for the fox himself, um, you can really kind of do lots of things with your fox. I mean, if you were on the page and saw the one um, Linda posted, it was like almost, it was red and black. I'm going to do like a very reddish brown. Um, Jimmy Tarani sauce. <laughs> so this color is called Indian Red. Most um, pencils also have a color called terracotta, and terracotta would work really well too. Just something that has that kind of redness in the brown. Or you can also just do orange. Um, you know, a lot of times when you look at drawings of foxes, they are orange <clears throat> in color. But since I put him in the pumpkin, and I know my pumpkin is gonna be orange, I kind of want to do something that con that's contrasting that a bit. And I'm coloring it pretty hard. I want it on the darker side this time. I don't want to see too much white inside of that shade. And then I'm gonna color the top part of the face the same color. I'm gonna come along my edges so I don't get it out of the lines, go into these little guys. And it's gonna go down the nose. I'm gonna rip out my page, make it easier to color along this nose. <clears throat> yeah, I decided to draw the fox today with kind of a little bit like he's looking from the side a little. Like we're seeing the side of the nose because I really kind of wanted to try to capture that length of the nose. But, oh, man, by the end of it, I thought, oh, I should have just, just drawn him straight on. <laughs> but, again, I think you'll find once it gets colored in, it will look better. It'll look cuter. It'll make a little more sense. Oh, a blue pumpkin. That's a good idea. I mean, yeah, you could do lots of other pumpkins. Um, I went to our local grocery store the other day, and they had some great pumpkins. I love ghost pumpkins, the ones that are white, but they kind of have um, – sometimes, sometimes ghost pumpkins are just white, but there are certain ones that kind of are white and gray, and they might even have a little bit of pink in there and a little blues and purples. I love those. <clears throat> I love the look of them. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil a little. Ah, I dropped it. Okay. 
We've been watching this show. I don't know what channel it's on. I almost want to say the cooking channel, but that can't be right. They're not cooking. But it might be. Um, but the, it's a competition show, and they carve pumpkins. They are given like a theme. They do these big pumpkin carvings. It's pretty fun to watch. I love carving pumpkins, but I'm not, not that I'm not that good at it, but I don't do anything, you know, I might do an elaborate cutting, but when you see these people who like shave the skin on the outside, you know, it's pretty cool. Making them kind of 3D. Mine are always flat. One dimension. Yeah, see? See how much cuter he looks? Like, once you add that color, the nose doesn't bother me at all. It's just when he's in um, white. Is that what it is, Rosie? Is it Halloween Wars? It's... I know we watch the baking ones sometimes, but I really like the pumpkin carving one. And we're down to four, four people, I think, or three people. I know next episode is the season finale. We find out the winner. Now I'm going to do this part of the tail. So see, this little piece right there stays white because that's like the area behind the fox. And then now you'll see what I was saying on not cutting into the chest because I felt like if I did that, it was just going to look like tail in front of the chest versus part of the body. Almost done. <clears throat> Man, I'm losing my voice today. I should have brought my water in. And there we go. Just kind of filling in some of that white. <clears throat> oh, very cute. I like it. I like it colored in. Some things just need color. <coughs> All right. Now the pumpkin, I'm going to do orange. I'm going to do this part right here darker. Although it's usually the reverse, right? You On the inside, it looks a little lighter, but I'm flipping that around. So I'm making it darker inside. So we kind of end up with like a shadow. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something different. I am going to make a face. So I'm going to come in. I'm just going to make a simple pumpkin face. And I'm not going to outline it. I'm just going to do it in pencil. So I'll give myself a little triangle eye right here. And the reason I'm doing this this way is because then it looks lit up. It looks like you've got a candle on inside and it's illuminated. Put a little one right here. And 
And then the nice thing here is this adds a color. So now I'm just not dealing with all of these red and orange colors. I'm actually getting to put another little color in. And then the mouth, I'm gonna do two front teeth. One, two. And do one tooth on the bottom too, right in the middle. And anyone who's printing out the coloring page, they could do this too. And, um, you know, do all kinds of different faces because I didn't do that in pen first. So sometimes I, I like that. Now, typically though, you know, the lines don't make sense going right through. I wouldn't see those lines, but I promise you that once it gets all colored in, it's not even something like you may not have even noticed that until I said it and pointed it out. Someone wouldn't really look at it and go, well, those lines shouldn't be there. And they shouldn't, but it's also cartoon drawing. You can do pretty much anything you want in a cartoon drawing never has to make sense. That's the fun part of cartooning, cartooning, is you can make it as goofy and crazy as you want. We could have drawn a fox with pig ears and a bear body. And you know what? If it's a cartoon, looks fine. might look ugly, but it's fine. It's your own little made up creature. Now I'll come in and color that pumpkin. I will need to be slightly careful when I'm going around those eyes. Um, I could go right over them because technically if it was carved and it was glowing, you still would see the like, you know, you see the flesh on the back side. So you might see some orange hue to it. So it might actually look kind of good if you just went right over it. Now that I'm saying that, thinking about it. Remember, always turn your page. Sometimes it's just a lot easier to color. It's a lot easier to keep your direction too or just follow the curves. Like I'm definitely, I started this way, but I curved down because I'm kind of following the natural curves of the lines of the pumpkin. using more of the side of my pencil instead of straight on. Colors more space and gives this kind of lighter shade. If I was coloring it dark, I would go more straight on than from the side. Come along this top edge. And I'll turn it this way and go along this side. I'll show you one other little thing you can do once I'm done coloring this, just to give a little bit of dimension 
little added detail to the drawing. Let's come along this bottom line. So, hi Catherine. So you can go along this edge and like actually kind of outline the lit up part with that same orange. And it just gives a little dimension. I'm even kind of shading inward a little bit on those sides. Cause you know, then you kind of get that that shape like that when you cut a pumpkin you end up with a little bit you can kind of see the inside so that's kind of what that does so I'm going to do that along all these edges kind of outline them and then just shade inward a little bit on each edge and it adds a little bit of dimension Same here. Makes that face stand out. I also think it just gives it more of a glowing look when you do that. this edge and then now you're going to do the same thing right along that edge just shade inward maybe in the corner it's a little more shaded I'm going to shade kind of between the teeth, but not so much on the top of the teeth because we wouldn't see too much of that. Same over here. Doing the corner quite a bit. There, see, it just gives you some nice, oh, hi, Connor. I gotta do a little bit of erasing. I can't find my favorite paper anymore. I think Target isn't gonna carry it and no one else seems to. And so I'm trying out all these new papers and they all smear and it drives me bonkers. So now with my leaves, I'm gonna do lots of different coloring in my leaves. So I might have some that go green to yellow. I'm gonna have some that go yellow, red, and orange. This one, put some green in. Maybe a little bit less though. yellow in there and I'm going to bring that yellow on top of the green too so you could use a colorless blender and blend those two together a bit but I think by doing this by taking that yellow coloring your top part and then bringing it down on top of the green it gives that look like the leaf is in the process of turning but it didn't fully change yet Oh, they do. Walmart has it. Okay, my Walmart doesn't. In fact, I tried to order it and they um, they canceled my order. And then my mom in Florida tried to order me some and they canceled the order. 
and it was such a cheap paper. It was good quality. It, um, yeah, I was, I've been pretty bummed because I haven't found a good replacement yet. I'll have to go to Elk Grove Walmart. Is it the, um, is it the older Walmart in Elk Grove or the newer one? There's one that's more on 99 side and then there's one. Oh, you just said off of 99. Oh, so it's the newer one. Okay, that's even closer. That's even better. I might go out there today. I always try to, um, you know, teach my kid and enforce even just with other people to, you know, like, don't be afraid of change. Change is good. And then I start having a fit because nobody carries my paper anymore. <laughs> But, you know, you find favorites and then to have them gone. It's frustrating. Oh, good. I will look, Nancy. I'll do the online first because that's the thing is my local Walmart also said, you know, it had some and I did the order and I think I ordered five also, maybe even six. And then they canceled my order and said they didn't actually have it in stock. And anytime I've gone to my local Walmart, they've never had it in stock. So I was surprised when online it said it did, but um, turns out they did not in the long run. So yeah, I'll have to order online and see. And then these leaves, I'm gonna do red at the top and orange at the bottom. Thank you, glad you like it. And remember, if you're just popping on this video late, if you've just kind of shown up, you've just found it, these videos always get posted in full after we've completed them. They also, also they also get posted on Instagram. So if it's easier for you to watch it on Instagram and you're now following Draw with Stacey there, subscribing, you can always watch it there. I know a lot of people do the Instagram. They'll say, oh, I like Instagram better because I can put it on my TV. So I know Instagram has an app. Well, thank you, Nancy. I am actually going to do that like immediately after this drawing is over because I miss my paper and I've tried two other new kinds and I just don't like either of them even remotely as close. So there we go. There's our Fox for Fall drawing with our cute pumpkin. Um, another fun idea for these drawings is use them as decoration. Hang them up in your windows. I actually was driving around a neighborhood the other day. I was over in East Sac and I saw a house that had a draw with Stacy picture in the window and it tickled me. So I'm just gonna put my name, where I'm from and my age underneath. And there we go, super cute. Even though I was going crazy with that nose, it worked out and came out in the end. Just needed a little bit of color. I will upload the um, pre-drawn one. So if you have a kiddo or you yourself like to color but don't like to draw, you have that available to you. And I will see you all on Friday. Happy drawing, everybody. Don't forget to share your drawings with me. Upload them to the group or throw them in an album.